So, hi, I'm Desiree. Uh, I um, write as Desbot on the Nerd Element. And I'm here today with Adam Leader and Richard Oakes from the new feature Feed Me, which is a horror film. It was recently in here at LA at Beyond Fest. Um, hi, it's nice to meet you guys. Uh, what can you tell me about how you got started? Um, well, uh, with this particular film, it, it was an interesting story. Um, we were on a shoot. Um, so me and Rich, we shoot, uh, we shoot music videos and stuff. And like, we, we were on a shoot and, um, I kind of just floated the idea to Rich about the, the Armin Muse story that, you know, the cannibal in, in Europe that, um, somehow got someone to sign a contract that, that willingly allowed himself to be eaten by him. And the, the two of us just thought it was such a bizarre story. Um, because it's it's real you know and it, it kind of inspired us to to make uh, just a, a film ba based on on those events pretty much so um that's kind of how it, it got started and then you know the, the the next the next stage i guess was the fun bit where we both created this story together so but yeah that's that's how it begun and um i read that uh i think it was you adam that was in a band yes i am yeah yeah oh are you still in a band what's the band name uh, we're called In Search of Sun. Uh, we're like a, a rock or a metal band. I guess it, it depends on the individual, what, you know, their taste. But yeah, they, we're a metal band from London. And uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're about to release something new, actually. I, I needed to get that shameless plug in there. So. Okay, <laughs> no problem. Um, Richard, where did you get your start? Um, well, I was a bin man back in 2012. <laughs> And I thought I can either kill myself or I can do something creative. Um, so I, a friend told me about these cameras, which DSLRs you could use with um, interchangeable lenses and they actually looked really good and they were actually a good price. And I, up until then, I've always loved the idea of doing films and stuff, but it, the, the price of cameras is too expensive. So ended up getting one of those cameras and started filming a couple of my friend's bands because um, I thought, oh, I can't make a movie. I'm just not not there. So I'm going to learn how to do stuff through bands. And yeah, it picked off really quick. And I've been doing music videos and with Adam for like, you know, the past 10 years. Um, <clears throat> but then, yeah, started off the back of that. A few people started asking me to shoot their short films. And then they moved on to features and I filmed features for them and then was like, well, you know, I still enjoy doing that and still do that today, but I, I thought, well, I'd rather film something that we've written because you can be more passionate about it. Um, so that's what happened there. So your previous film, uh, Host, was also a horror film. Uh, what is it about horror that you like, that what you want to bring these stories to the screen? I think just because it's it's... It's like we're into all sorts of, of genres and stuff, but horror has, I guess, a, a, it, horror is special because it's it's a way that you can tap into fear. Um, fear being that the, I guess the, the the most fun element, and not necessarily easy, but it, it's it's fun and it's easier to tap into fear because, and, and I feel that's why people like horror and why it's got such a, a strong dedicated fan base because it, it's it's almost I think Rich said this I'm kind of stealing your words Rich you should probably say it better than me but it's the whole theme park thing you know you, you were saying about going to a theme park and that thrill you say it better than me man so yeah yeah so that's the, I think the reason lots of people kind of look at horror directors and go what's wrong with them but I think it's more <laughs> the uh I love, my family included. My family haven't watched a single film we've made. So, uh, <laughs> the, but I explain it to people that don't understand. It's like the reason you'd go on a roller coaster. You know, you don't. You know, that's about fear. It's you don't go on a roller coaster because you want a nice walk in the park or anything like that. You go on because it's scary and there's that dare element to it and that adrenaline rush and that you know overcoming your fears thing. And I think that's what people take away from horror and <clears throat> it's quite usually quite the opposite of what people on the outside expect they think people who watch horror or make horror are sick in the head but generally they're the nicest people that we've met and the same with like metal music and stuff that then they seem to be the nicest people and it might just be a way for them to to deal with 
their fears and their issues and things. And it's if if they, if it wasn't scary to them, that's when there might be an issue. I think if it was just, do you know what I mean? Like, yes, yes, I do. Um, I'm actually uh, so I'm the horror nerd on the nerd element, and I write a lot about horror films, and I watch a lot of horror films. And this is my Beyond Fest shirt from a couple of years ago for, before the pandemic. So um, that that's like one of my things is to go and seek out new horror, which is why I wanted to talk to you about this new film, Feed Me. Um, I did get a chance to watch it and it was uh, wonderfully disgusting and horrific and touching. Um, so I wanted to ask you about that. So I, I have read in um, some of your interviews that you did take the theme, uh, not the theme, the inspiration from the Armin uh, Mui story but you went a different direction. And one of the things I noticed about the film is that you're dealing with, you're not just dealing with the cannibalism, but it's the cannibalism as an eating disorder and loneliness and grief. Because um, for people who haven't seen the film yet, just briefly non-spoiler, 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 it's about a man who is grieving the death of his wife and decides that he wants to end his life. And so he signs an agreement with another man to allow the other man to eat him. Um, so what about in the process of writing this story, where did you come up with these themes and why did you want to use horror to tell that story? I think with, with horror, again, it's, it's something that we both love and it's the whole, um, I guess, rush of tapping into something scary that, that people kind of that adrenaline, you know, and, and in terms of the story itself, um, and tapping into the whole mental health and, and. I guess the irony in a way of eating disorders as well, when it comes to this, the particular subject of this film on the surface, um, we're very story driven people and we don't just want to write you know, as much as it's fun, as much as we find it fun to watch, you know, slasher films and this, that, and the other, we, we really want to be able to tell a real, a real story that, that people can relate to, particularly on the mental health side of things. And, and, especially eating disorders, which which in the broad spectrum of the, the mental health um, spectrum, if you will, it's not talked about enough. And it's so prevalent in, in this day and age. And it's something that, that people, particularly for me, in, in terms of the eating disorder thing close to me, I've found myself experience it, experiencing it through other people in my life. For, for one reason or another, three people very close to me have had that. Um, and we felt like this particular story would make sense to implement that into it. And then the whole grieving side of things, which we've all experienced in, in one way or another, it's, it's relatable, you know, and, and I guess we want to be able to tell a real story, a real, a touching story sprinkled with the, um, the thrill ride of horror, which we all love so much, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Um, I was going to ask you, and I don't want to give away the scene or any of the particulars, but there is something toward the end that turns into an actually really touching um, moment between people that could be friends, even though it's not that. Um, but it really taps into uh, how loneliness can destroy a person. Mm. And as funny as the movie, so uh, for people who haven't seen it yet, it's a funny, very funny movie. It's a horror comedy, but it does have these very deep moments. And so when you're directing this, when you're writing this, how do you approach that tonal shift? Rich? <laughs> Richard, you get to answer this one. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like a, a few people have asked how we found that balance with the tonal shifts. And there is some tonal shifts in this and it can drag you left right and center and um but we kind of just wrote i mean it sounds strange of the film like this but from the heart but also from what we love we put everything that we love on the page and that being the comedy style we love the drama side that we love and the stories we want to tell you know we're we're creatives we suffer with you know mental health ourselves do you know what i mean so there's a lot of ourselves both me and Adam in hidden in there and, and the things we struggle with and identity and um, loneliness and companionship and all those things that, 
you know, we wanted to make uh, not just a, a black and white bad guy that just goes out and kills and that that's what they are and they're just evils. We wanted to show a humanity to the, the bad guy that you, you would feel for him and identify with him as bizarre and disgusting as he is. <laughs> there's, there's an element where you 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 do feel sorry for him if we've got it right. You know what I mean? And that was something very, that we wanted. And a lot of the story, there's a lot of layers that we put in that you may not catch on a first watch of why he does what he does and who he is and how he's actually a very broken person that needs help. And that's what we wanted to show, especially with that end scene, I think. It is a very strange thing to watch a movie like this with the character he plays, uh, the, uh, the actor, I, I'm sorry, I've just name just slipped out of my head. Neil Ward. Neil Ward playing Lionel Flack as an American and very um, out there, broad personality, um, kind of reminded me of a Jason Sudeikis character from Saturday Night yeah. Live, just as that whole, I kept thinking, oh my God, Ted Lasso, what are you doing? Um, but he's, like you said, inside he's really broken and that comes out in several scenes, which is very strange to watch this man tormenting, uh, tormenting another man and then, but feeling sorry for him in a way. Um, what do you want audiences to get from this? You want that? Do you want that? Or I know there are going to be horror hounds are like, oh, the gore is the best thing and that's all they're going to see. And um, other horror fans will, you know, tap into the deeper themes. What what would you like, um, or do you even care how people react as long as they like it? Yeah, well, I I think <laughs> for us, we 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 really we wanted to um, we wanted people to to uh, in a way maybe identify, but but at least understand that I guess for ninety nine percent of the people in this world that we live in we are all products of our environment, you know, and, and, and so much has, has a, a contributing factor into the people that we all grow up, grow up into. And, you know, whether it's trauma or happiness, sadness, trauma, heartbreak, grief, whatever it is, it, it all contributes to the, to the people that we become and we're always changing. Um, and then there's that 1%, I guess, of people that arguably are just born full-on psychopaths that that have a scientific you know mm -hmm. defect you know but yeah for sure and we wanted someone that like rich said that isn't just an on the surface slasher killer type guy or girl or whatever that just does it for the sake of it as fun as that can be to watch we wanted someone that that can be identified with because it makes the audience i mean tell us if you didn't feel this but several people have said we're like we we feel a little bit bad because we identify and understand that this guy has come from such a traumatic, abusive um, background. I won't say any more because I, I want to spoil it, but it's, and that's the interesting um, conflict, I guess, that, that one might have watching and following Lionel Flack. Yeah, it, it is a very strange thing to watch a film like this and, you know, watching one man's torment because there's the extreme grief that Jed feels. Um, and I also liked his last name being free man when he's actually not a free man, but um, yeah. <laughs> um, there's a, you know, extreme grief that he feels there's the pain he feels over his wife's um, just eating disorder. And then there's Lionel who's got an eating disorder, but it's horrifying in a different way. Like watching someone you love waste away is horrifying. And then watching Lionel finding his comfort in eating other people also horrifying. But and it, it really was an interesting, um, for me going back and forth, like I want this guy to get away, but kind of want this guy to get help. <laughs> but I also don't want him to be out in the world. Yeah. So, um, since we're on our last couple of minutes here, I just want to ask you, uh, how was it received at Beyond Fest? Yeah, it was great. We, we, every show we've had, we've had a really positive response. And, you know, the last hit on the right points. I mean, that's how you can gauge it with an audience is does, does, does the reactions in the, the auditorium hit when they should? And, and I think they did. And 
they responded well and we got questions and good questions and things like that so I guess that's the way to tell and we're waiting for I guess the, tomorrow when it comes out for the the worldwide people to let us know what they think and we'll cry to bed at night <laughs> looking at the uh the reviews but <laughs> yeah it's uh, yeah. Yeah, there was a, I was going to ask the last question is when can our audience go out and see this picture? So yeah, I, October 27th, um, digital on demand. Um, I think make mainly like prime video and, and iTunes and stuff October 27th in, uh, in North America and Canada. So uh, go watch feed me. <laughs> and then also I noticed that in hosts, some of the same actors, came over to feed me and it's like my last question I guess um are you building a stable of your own your your own acting troupe within within reason I think we, we are we are all very close um um not to say that we just get our friends in movies for the sake of it you know we we didn't work with uh Chris who plays Jed on hosts um so we do bring new people in but it's more people by a word of mouth for us that we feel fit the part you know and and i guess it's always easier um as directors to be able to to work with people um that not only do we feel a, a incredibly talented actors but that we already have established relationships with because it's it's just the the, the director actor relationship is already there and it's so much better that way and um and rich will tell you like the part was already written for neil yeah so we wrote the the whole film for Neil, we wanted to, he, he, we did, we felt bad on host because he was very much just a bit of a cutout because he's this possessed person. And he was like, I loved the film, but I didn't really get to act because I'm just <laughs> stood in different positions. So uh, we wrote this film going, right, that's all right. We'll, uh, we'll give you something you can put your teeth into literally. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that horrifying note, we will end this. I am very appreciative of your time. Again, this was Adam Leader and Richard Oaks from their new film, Feed Me, which will be out tomorrow on digital on demand. Um, for our My Horror Friends, really gross, really funny, really good. Thank you so much again, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Desiree. Thank you. Thank you.